September 11th, 2001, I was working with Channel 3, WREG News Channel 3. I was 32 years old, four years into my tenure at News Channel 3. I got up early that morning because I was scheduled to be at Shelby County Civil Court, 140 Adams, because a scam artist whom I had been investigating and who ended up being sued because of one of my stories was expected in court uh, to answer to those charges from the plaintiff who appeared in our story. Um, I was coming downstairs from getting ready for work. Uh, my son, who is now 21, uh, just a little guy then, was in front of the t TV. And as soon as I came down the stairs and saw the TV, I saw the second plane hit the World Trade Center. Uh, hi, Ernie Allen. Hello, Lauren Hooser. Thanks for joining me. So at that point, we, you know, I was still trying to catch up on the news, not, and, and at that point, most national news networks covering the story still thought that it was a bizarre accident. Uh, they weren't aware that it was a terrorist attack yet. But only within a few minutes, before I even got a chance to go out to my car, because I was going to meet my photographer at Shelby County Civil Court on Adams Avenue to cover my story, my phone rings at the house. Remember, we didn't all have cell phones back then or a version of it that is easily used. Uh, the phone rings at my house. It's my assignment editor at Channel 3 at that time, Ethel Senstack, and she says, you're not going to 140 Adams. I'm sending you to meet your photographer at the Tennessee Air National Guard base by the airport off Democrat Road. I said, makes sense, I'm heading that direction. So I got in my car, which was a 96 Saturn SL1, and I hustled to the Tennessee Air National Guard base. Uh, I was already close to the public information officer for the base at the time, who was uh, Lieutenant Colonel, um, oh my goodness, uh, his name was just on the tip of my tongue, Lamar Spencer. The Lieutenant Colonel Lamar Spencer, who's now retired, and he was waiting for me, and he was also waiting for my photographer. We arrived just within a few minutes of each other. They let us in the security gate at the Tennessee Air National Guard. Uh, by this time, it's Oh, goodness. It's between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, so by this time, they're starting to determine that this is not an accident, that the planes hitting the World Trade Centers were an act of terrorism. The Pentagon hasn't happened yet, but it's about to. And uh, the plane heading to Shanksville, Pennsylvania, has not been discovered by this time. We are there maybe 10, 15 minutes trying to figure out what story we may have out of the Air National Guard base to complement whatever this is in our team coverage for that day when the air base and in turn the Defense Department declares threat condition delta. What threat condition delta means in the context of Air National Guard bases as well as Army armor, as U.S. Army armories and such is, it's like DEFCON. It's like a raising of the DEFCON level for the, the national security threat. Threat condition delta means the base is shut down, sealed off, secured, as well as everybody who's inside it, regardless of whether they are Air National Guard personnel, visitors, media, uh, what have you. So my photographer and I that day were locked by 10 o'clock inside the Tennessee Air National Guard base, uh, and we were the only media teams allowed inside the entire day of September 11th, 2001. Other media started to follow up. Uh, thinking that the Tennessee International Guard base would be a place that they should be. They were turned away on security uh, grounds. But by virtue of timing, my photographer and I were allowed to stay there. So initially there was no story. Uh, the Air National Guard was just securing the property down. We, we were allowed to shoot video within protocols that would not jeopardize security methods of the base, shooting active on-duty base soldiers securing and MPs securing the base, but we didn't really have anybody to interview yet because it was unclear what was happening. Then we gathered in a room with some of the Air National, Gays, Air National Guard uh, personnel and we watched the planes hitting the plane hitting the Pentagon. And that's and that by that time we realized that this is a whole different thing in our world. So my photographer and I had no choice but to, to stay and, and to figure out how we could generate coverage from the Air National Guard base that was relevant to the Memphis audience as we were watching in disbelief what we were seeing on national news networks. And it was still unclear until about 2 o'clock that afternoon 
uh, when the base decided to activate all reservists than the Memphis Mid-South area to provide assistance in uh, securing the base in the event that the Tennessee Air National Guard base should ever become an attack, uh, an attack target uh, in this situation. So that became our story. Lamar Spencer, Lieutenant Colonel, told us what they were gonna do. He gave us a, cre a, a quick briefing, which we recorded and used as part of our coverage. And then we, he said, you would be allowed to ask these reservists as they arrive to check in if they'd be willing to do an interview uh, as to being called into active duty on September 11th, 2001. And one by one, each of them had a story to tell. The first one was a Memphis police officer pulled right out of his patrol car. The air guard called his precinct commander. The commander dispatched someone to wherever he was and said, I got your car. You've been called to active duty at the Tennessee Air National Guard based near the airport. You, you need to report right now. So he left his patrol car and showed up and collected his weapon and began to provide a security assistance to the base. The second person I interviewed was a FedEx worker on lunch break at a uh, downtown subway. Her supervisor shows up at the restaurant, just happened to know that she was eating at that restaurant and said, you've been activated. You're expected at the Tennessee Air National Guard base. You need to show up right now. I got your sandwich. <laughs> So she left her lunch sitting right there on the table in that subway came and then told me that story on camera later. So we talked to many people like that and many of these reservists, as you might imagine, uh, were either former first responders professionally or they were current first responders, first responders like that police officer who was, who was pulled right out of his patrol car. And they were a reservist because they were, prepared, they were prepared to serve their country with the skills that they had to serve their cities and towns and communities. And one by one, they showed up uh, to get their uniforms on, to get their weapons, and to get their orders, their marching orders as to how and where on the base they should be to help secure the base. Uh, eventually, there was never any threat, but we had a story to tell, but we still couldn't leave the base. <laughs> by our news deadline, which at that time was about uh, 3.30 for a five o'clock show, and I was in the five and the six that day, we had to have a piece written uh, and edited in time for the newscast. So I wrote my story out in longhand on a yellow paper legal pad. I cut my audio inside my photographer's camera. There's a way you can do that by attaching the mic directly to the camera, find a quiet place as you can to try to secure it as soundproof as possible, and then um, uh, cut your audio in there. And then we had Glenn Carver, who was the sports director at that time and who clearly was not going to have a sports cast that night, come gather our video cassette, which we were still shooting video and audio on, on video cassette of my track, of my pictures. And bless his heart, Glenn Carver, who was used to uh, cutting sports highlights in Memphis Tigers and Memphis Grizzlies and, and uh, uh, Memphis Redbirds highlights for the newscast, was cutting my news package about reservists showing up for active duty at the Tennessee Air National Guard for protecting the, the, the base for my evening newscasts. And uh, he did a wonderful job. And we ended up having an exclusive story that day uh, that no one else had, but completely by luck. Uh, and also by the fact that Lieutenant Colonel Spencer trusted my reputation and welcomed me with open arms and knew I'd play by the rules. And uh, I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget the looks on the reservists' faces as they came in, trying to look professional, but still worried about what this meant for our country. I remember being confused myself. I rem remember not being able to wait to get home to my wife and kids to talk to them about what was going on. At the, at the time, my wife, who's now a school teacher and has been for 14 years, was a stay-at-home mom, so I knew they would be worried. I was worried I would never get to, I was worried I wouldn't get to leave the base that day because of the security protocols and, and wondered what kind of accommodations they would make for my photographer and me if we had to stay. But the Defense Department lifted the threat condition Delta off of all Air National Guard bases nationwide by about 6.45 p.m. that evening, 15 minutes after the six o'clock newscast ended. So we were able to leave, albeit late, but we were able to leave and we were happy to comply 
uh, not only uh, as a service to our own, to, as our own service to our country to to abide by the rules and help protect the base, but also to have the exclusive story that no other Memphis station had that day. So that is my 9/11 story. I encourage you to uh, leave your 9/11 story in the comments.